Breeze, very briefly, take me back to that moment, the 17th of March 2012. You were playing, of course, in the match between uh, yourselves in Bolton uh, and Tottenham uh, at White Hart Lane. And then what? What do you remember? Just not far from the halfway line, I think on the right hand side of the pitch, there was nobody around me. And I just fell down and collapsed. But my vision had become very blurry when I was running around. So if I get to see like where you are right now, I'll see double vision of you. So all of a sudden, I just went, that was it. That was the last time I was able to play 11 aside with professional guys in the pitch. So thereafter, we, we discovered you suffered a cardiac arrest. Yep. Um, and really, the rest is history. <laughs> you went to hospital beyond that, check after check after check. You went to somebody nearby here at London Bridge, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, Professor Schilling, who's around the corner from here. So uh, yeah. he did my, he's the one who implanted my ICD as well. So, uh, and is down the, down the bottom here so I went to see him as well as a, somebody who looked up to me for about a month when I was in hospital so we built that friendship and you trusted him and, he, in, and his advice was just I would advise you to call it day but as an ex as anybody who plays sport you're just eager to find out if there's more you can do so I went to see another guy in Belgium who's Pedro Brograda who's uh, I think his brother is looking after Sergio at the moment okay. uh, and I went okay. to see him spent two weeks with him um we did everything that we could have done just to find if there's a way we can get back in playing. But it was just too much and, and then they advised me to, to stop and stop playing football. Yes, mm. I was upset. Mm. But the bigger picture is that I'm still here. I get to be able to spend time with people. I get to do things I love to do. And, and, and yes, I miss football, but it's not the end of the world. You were what, about 22, 23? Yeah, I was 22. 20, um, 22nd, 23rd birthday. And did you say to them, is that absolutely it? Oh, You're yeah. telling me my career's over? Yeah, I, that was it. But, you know, especially when I went to see uh, Pedro in, in Belgium, it, we did everything. Yeah. E- everything everything you could ask and wish for. We, you know, And Pedro is the, is the best in the world. And if he can't find an issue... Because every doctor referred to him as the guy who has a solution of how to deal with you know this kind of situation, and um, it just wasn't. I, I said I did what I had to do. You know, people said to me, "Are you upset?" I said, "No, I, I'm not upset in the sense that you know, coming from Congo in Africa and coming to England, I never knew or I never thought one day I'd become a footballer. So for me to play the game in England, I live my dream. But uh, this game's taken away from me." Because I'm not because I was a bad player, but just because of accident that I have no control of. But I still get to live the dream. Yes, I get to enjoy life. I get to do what I need to do. But it's not the end of the world. There's more to it. And there's more to do things in life as well. Sure. Well, we'll talk about the Sergio Aguero situation in a moment. Inter Milan, you'll be aware, yeah. have said in the last 24 hours, they've confirmed that uh, Christian Eriksen is not allowed to play in Italy this season as a result of the cardiac arrest that he suffered at uh, Euro 2020 what is your honest take on that do you think Fabrice can you can you see Ericsson playing again Jim you know what I, uh, people ask me all that you know do you, have you got in touch with him have you spoke to him I, I think you got to look at the bigger picture do you know once you suffer this kind of stuff it's not about you anymore now it's about the people around you you know one thing I know for sure he's definitely not allowed to drive for about a year and a half that's, that's a guarantee and then the situation of being involved in a very intense sport like football, it's another difficult situation because you're up and down and you know it's not good for your heart. So me personally, I would advise him just listen. You play the game, you play at the highest level, you won trophy, shake everybody's hand and do something else with your life because you know, every time you go back in the pitch, you're putting a lot of people in danger. It's not about you anymore now. So you know you got you got, a, you got a, it's a, I believe he's got a young family as well. So you got a lot of a lot of things you got to put into perspective that when you make this type of decision is not just I'm gonna go play no it's you got your wife and your kids and the club and also I mean this is more Simon when Simon get involved the insurance part of it as well. Yeah. You know no no insurance company want to insure him now. There's no way, especially if, if you know that you've already have a, an episode like that. They already see they see you as a someone who's more likely to break down again. But Barcelona have said that Aguero, Sergio Aguero, uh, is quotes calm. That's how they've described it. Uh, after he was forced off in the the draw against Alaves with chest pains, um, we know Fabrizio's been ruled out of football for three months, and they're going to undergo further tests. What's your 
What's your thought thought process on Aguero? But with his surgery, it's he hasn't collapsed in the pitch, but he's filled with chest pain. So every situation is different, Jim. You know, but but you can see there's a similarity in there that three months it become five months. You know, because if you if you can feel the pain, the chest and the pain, what does that mean? That if you come back and play, you can feel it again. So I, I can see the way where it's going. But I don't want to make jump to conclusion yet, but there's a similarity here that you know. Hopefully, as I said. It would be great to, to see him play football, but I'm not going to be the one that say he should go back and play. Because I said, you're putting a lot of people in danger. You know, I, I believe since the, Christian, the the Christian stuff happened during Euro, you know, some of those guys had to see specialists after just to speak to them because it was too much for them. They never witnessed this before. Yeah. Some of the guys who were involved in the game, they had to see somebody be away, away from the game. Yes, a, yes. You know, so. but the game itself has got to take the appropriate measures, Simon. Of course. Uh, and at, yeah. at least if these incidents teach us anything, yeah. it's exactly that. Yeah. We have to prepare for it. Absolutely. Uh, and obviously we've had Justin Edinburgh's son on talking about the nature of defibrillators being brought into as many football stadiums as we possibly can around the country from <laughs> the highest level to the lowest level because it isn't something that just happens to the elite footballers. It can happen at any time. And as Fabrice will tell you, it's the reaction at the time, yeah. which is the most important, definitely. right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. We've seen the, the, the situation in Newcastle, how quickly, you know, you, to get somebody who can use do CPR in there, it's, it's a mass, it makes Ooh, a massive difference. When the difference. supporter collapsed. Yeah. Yes, and then course. to get a doctor to bring it, the defibrillator, that gives yes. the individual a, about 50% chance of surviving. Yeah. So having the right people doing that, know what to do in that situation. You know, you know people make a laugh and joke about that um, staying alive advert, but there's a massive message behind it. With 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 Vinnie Jones, it's a massive message behind it. Yes, it's it's a laugh and a joke, but the message is being able to do CPR. You you're saving people life. So we've seen it, the situation over the summer. We've seen it at Newcastle, and now the situation you know with Barcelona with Sergio Aguero that yeah it was detected before that. Now we know the the cause of it. You know, the game has to look at it. Is you know, you're talking about the World Cup in Qatar. In, mm, in that, yeah. So, if it's going to happen, it's a in, good point. That, there's a lot of things that we need to look at. It, you know, I know you want to send your best, no doubt, to Aguero and to to Christian Eriksen, no doubt, this lunchtime, as as would we, Fabrice. Do you count your blessings every day? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Jim, I, I enjoy life. I enjoy going out, do what I need to do. I enjoy just, you know, even if if something upset me, I need to zoom myself out very quickly because I think sometimes. You know, my missus said to me, it could be worse. So that for me just triggered everything. I said, oh, I need to get back to my normal self again. So I don't, you know, people say, you must be foot miss football. I miss being around the change room, but I don't miss being in there. And you know, I'm happy to be from there and then I watch the game, but, you know, I'm able to raise my children. As long as I'm here to do things with my children, that's all you can ask and wish for. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.